Good morning, class 12. So we have come almost to the end of the syllabus. Uh, the last part I have uh, told you about GATT, that is General Agreement on Tariff and Trade. Now today I'll be discussing the second last topic with you, that is regarding aid. Okay, another very important uh, part of ISC syllabus is aid. So you all understand the meaning of aid. Aid means helping. Right? So we are talking of aid from the developed to the developing countries. Because developing countries suffer from financial crisis, because developing countries are always in debt trap, the concept which you all understand now, this debt trap concept. So because there is financial crisis and debt trap, now what is happening in globalization is that the developed countries are helping the developing countries by financially giving them help in the form of loan so that the developing countries can fulfill their requirements in their own countries, right? So now when we talk of aid and a developed country helping the developing country, this aid, this help, comes in two ways. Now what are the two ways? One is tied aid and the other one is called untied aid. So there are two kinds of help rendered by the developed to the developing. It has very simple meaning. Please listen carefully to understand. So tied aid. When I say that developed country is helping the developing country through tied aid, it means when the developed gives the money, they also decide how the aid is to be utilized in the developing country. Like suppose a developing country, say India, uh, there is an urgency of construction of hospitals or there is urgency of construction of some road. We cannot utilize the fund according to our needs, but we will be utilizing the fund according to what the developing developed country guides us to do. So they are giving you the loan, but they are also telling you what to do with that money. Okay, so you do not have the freedom, the recipient country does not have the freedom to decide what to do with the money. You are already told that I am giving you the help, but this is what you are supposed to do with the help that I am giving you. That is called tied aid. Alright? And just the opposite is untied aid. Where? When it is an untied aid, the recipient country can utilize the fund that you are receiving from the donor country for fulfillment of whatever needs are there in your country. Okay? So whatever you need, you need hospitals, you need roads, you need to construct industries, at your leisure, you can utilize the money. Nobody is guiding you as to what to do with the money. So, when a developed helps a developing nation, the help comes in tied aid and untied aid, right? So, tied meaning you are told what to do with the money, how to utilize the fund. Untied, the recipient does what they, whatever urgency is there in their country, right? Now, both have their own advantage and disadvantage. Not that tight aid because you are told to do what to do. It's not that it is disadvantageous. It brings, it definitely has some advantages when a developed is guiding you how to utilize the fund. So now let's try to understand the advantages of tight aid. So suppose uh, India has taken tight aid from some country. So what is the advantage of tight aid? I have written down some points for you. That is proper utilization of fund. So because somebody is monitoring you, there is a monitoring system. They have given you the money and they are also monitoring what you are doing. The funds are properly utilized for proper projects in your country. Okay. The second one is uh, a small developing country, they get exposure to the global market only because of now, whatever products uh, you are manufacturing in your country, the developed country helps you. They ensure you that you can 
give your products and export your products to other country. So developing and underdeveloped countries, what happens is they get exposure to the global market. That is another uh, advantage. Then it minimizes corruption on both sides. The donor country will also not be corrupt. The recipient country, because the donor is monitoring you very strictly, the recipient country will also try to be fair and just in utilization of the fund. So there is a reduced corruption if the aid has come in the form of tight aid, right? And both countries, the recipient and the donor, both countries are accountable for proper utilization of aid. So this is something very good. This is the advantage of getting tight aid from a developed nation. Now, when we see untied aid, suppose there is uh, no monitoring system and you have been told to do whatever you want with that finance that you have got in your hands, what is the advantage of untied aid? It is flexible. Okay, the flexibility factor is there. The aid can be utilized wherever needed. Whatever urgency is there in the developing country, the fund can be utilized there. So you don't have to listen to the you're not under stress of the developed country that I have to utilize the money here. But whatever the urgency in your country, the aid can be freely utilized for the fulfillment of that requirement. The second advantage of untied aid is that independent thinking. I am somebody who is not monitoring me. So as a person, India can independently think without being guided by somebody else from Side. So there is innovative and independent thinking of the developing countries if you have got untied aid. Then the there is goodwill because nobody is monitoring you. The goodwill is maintained between the two countries. Unlike uh, un uh, tight aid where the relation between the two countries is not very good. When it is untied aid, what happens is the relation between the developed and the developing country is very, very good, right? And uh, lastly, to talk of the advantage, it allows the aid to be utilized more efficiently. The aid, the money that has come, that can be employed more efficiently. So these are the advantages and this, uh, sorry, the advantage of tied and untied aid. Now, the last part, let's try to understand what is the disadvantage of tight aid. How is tight aid when a country is monitoring you strictly and telling you what to do with the fund? What is the disadvantage that uh, developing countries face? Number one is tight aid, they are more often geared for commercial needs. The benefits, what the developed country tells you to do and the benefit that comes because of the project that you are doing in your country, most of the benefit is taken by the developed country. So when tight aid comes to say India and the project in which the money is utilized, that uh, the project that you are being told to do is more beneficial for the developed rather than thinking for the requirements of the developing country. So here is where the, where the disadvantage begins. Because the developed country has given you a loan in the form of tight aid, they are thinking of their advantage more than the advantage of the developing country. Then uh, the second uh, disadvantage is you have taken the loan but you are carrying out a project in your country to fulfill somebody else's requirement and gradually in doing so, the developed countries become too dependent on the, de uh, the sorry, the developing countries become too dependent on the developed nations. Then it, uh, the compulsion to spend the aid on uh, goods and services of the donor country may cause an increase in the development cost. Okay, so they will guide you from where you are supposed to buy the raw materials, where you are supposed to sell it. So that increases the development cost. Uh, so these are some of the disadvantages of the relation between the two countries is not very good because of tight aid. So these are the disadvantages. Trying to understand the disadvantage of untied. 
Now there is no monitoring system and you are the developing country is at free will to utilize the fund. So now what happens here? Definitely what will happen first is corruption. There may be corruption. If nobody monitors you, what you are doing with the money, there are likely to be chances that the money will be misutilized. So there are a lot of chances of corruption that may arise. Okay. Uh, the initial goal, the purpose for which the money, the loan was taken by the developed, uh, developing country, that may not be fulfilled. So because corruption arises in the developing countries, because there are too many people involved, the goal with which the loan was taken, that may not be fulfilled, right? And the aid is not monitored vigilantly and so it may not be uh, suppose you have taken the loan for the, uh, for the construction of hospitals or roads or something, that may not be actualized because of the corruption that is involved. So the aids that come to the uh, developing countries, tied and untied aid, they have some advantages and they also have disadvantages. So we are left with only one topic plus that is intellectual property rights. I will be doing this in the next video.